the um, electrolytes, looking at the kidney functions, um, potassium, sodium, that was normal. And urine analysis came back perfectly good. Now, this is the one that came back extremely elevated, and that was your total cholesterol. It was at 291 with the LDL of 218. Thank you for joining us. Hey, everybody. My name is G. Brown, G. Brown, the lifestyle changer, and this is... Frederick Brown, the husband. And what are they watching? Hanging, Hanging with, with the, the Browns. Browns. Yes, I, um, I think this is going to be great. You're talking about I'm moved, but that, no, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of... You think you're creating the intro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to use that. <laughs> uh-huh. No. This is the first 30 seconds. I already got the first 30 seconds. It's a slammer. It's still you. It's a slammer, though. I know you like the line, Mike. Go ahead on. No, this is about you, but I am sick and tired of <clears throat> when uh, people find out that this is what you're doing, the first question out of their mouth is, what about your cholesterol? Well, where were you when I was 200 and something pounds? You didn't ask me about my sugar levels. You didn't ask me about cholesterol. You asked me about none of those things. Absolutely so, nothing. so why all of a sudden now that I am in the best uh, health that I have been in in 30 something years? I'm going to tell you why. They don't really understand what, what they're really asking for what they're really looking for. They don't understand the ramifications of having uh, low, low testosterone. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Uh, low testosterone, how? <laughs> <laughs> Where is my mind? Low cholesterol. Uh, yeah, I was like, what? <laughs> Woo, that was funny. Yeah. That was, that was I intentional, I mean cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Oh my goodness, I was like, Testosterone, what? How can he let that one roll? Anyway, our goal is to equip people. That's one of the reasons why we share so much about our lives is because we want to equip you. We want to equip you with the knowledge. We want to equip you with how do you talk with family and friends in regards to uh, this and how do you talk back with your doctor in regards to this, uh, this meaning cholesterol. And I think the most important thing that we're really trying to bring to this, we're, we're trying to, we're trying to put it in layman terms, right? Uh, because most of us are not doctors, right? Most of us are not, um, um, nurses or, uh, nutritionists. So we don't have that medical background. And, um, so my wife and I, we, we really talk and try and do some research and, and try to make it as, plain as as we can you know it not to necessarily oversimplify it but at least uh get you a, a baseline of knowledge and that's kind of what we shoot for he's turning 60 in a couple of months and then i'll follow six months later i don't have to be a doctor to tell you i feel phenomenal Absolutely. i don't have to be a doctor to tell you i no longer have that long list i don't have to be a doctor to tell you that this, listen, we have stumbled on to something and I don't have to be a doctor to share that. It's kind of important for you to get the information and then do your own research, but we're just gonna try and, and, and present some of the information to you as best as we can. I'm and glad you said that because I'm gonna link two videos in the description uh, about this topic. So not only can you get our information, you can get it from a doctor as well. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to leave you and you go ahead and, 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 and show and teach because he say that I be asking too many questions and disrupt him. He didn't know I was going to tell that. So I'm going to go. Bye, y'all. My wife did a fantastic job on her recent teledoc with her doctor regarding her lipid panel test results. And I want to commend her for her efforts. And I kind of wanted to share with you um, some of the research that I've uh, discovered regarding total cholesterol, um, LDL, and HDL, and how these markers should be used to evaluate your risk hazard and hopefully dispel some misleading information. Um, disclaimer, small disclaimer here, 
I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, nor am I a nutritionist, nor do I have any background in the medical industry. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm only sharing information I've discovered for informational purposes only. You are encouraged to do your own research. My sources are Dr. Robert Lustig, Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee, as well as some others in the field of medicine. It seems that all of my sources say that total cholesterol captured, the total cholesterol captured should be discarded and discredited relative to heart disease. They have demonized cholesterol. Your liver produces 80% of the cholesterol in your body. 20% of it comes from the food that you intake. Check this out. 23% of the cholesterol is actually in your brain. Is cholesterol significant? Do you think? I want you to take a listen to something my wife said about total cholesterol. And I think she said it best. Let's take a listen. The two numbers that they always say, your triglycerides and your HDL, and both of my numbers are normal. So she sees some elevated, but you notice she said the total cholesterol. But the two numbers that really count, when you pull them out, they're normal. But then you have some others that's high, and when you add them all together, you're getting a high elevated state. But did you see also when she talks about the average? And I said, hold up, who's average? Because that's another thing. They put you up against average people. You can't put me against average. I don't even eat what they eat. So you're holding me accountable for the things that they are not doing right. And then saying that my blood work is not turning out right. Cause it's not as if there is a case study that says this, they just boxing all of these, some of these people on dialysis. I think she said it very well. And I hope it gives you a visual that you can relate to. Total cholesterol is all inclusive and tells you nothing relative to your risk of heart disease. You have to actually unpack what the numbers really mean. And that is something that's often overlooked in the medical community. My wife also talked about the five markers evaluating optimal metabolic health. And she identified them as being blood sugar levels, triglycerides, HDL cholesterol, blood pressure, and waist circumference. Now notice the five optimal markers listed that she described did not include LDL cholesterol as being a marker, but notice that her doctor pointed out that my wife's total cholesterol and LDL were high. I'm not saying that LDL isn't important. It really is. It, it, I ju I'm just saying that doctors place way more significance on this LDL than they should. Let's talk about it. Let's unpack your LDL first. Your LDL has a checkered history and no doubt corresponds to heart disease or risk of it in a large population. And the medical industry place way too much emphasis or significance, I should say, on this test. And that's because they have a drug for it. Their very first statin came out in 1987. So they said LDL matters most. Hmm. They got a drug for it. Now, here's the thing. The hazard risk ratio is 1.3, which means there's a 30% chance that you're more likely to develop a heart attack or risk of a heart attack over your lifetime. Now that's real people and, and it's public knowledge. I'm, I'm not denying that there's a 30% chance with a high LDL. Now here's where the problem lies with high LDL. There are two. And when the LDL is measured, you're actually measuring both at the same time with no distinguishment. Now it turns out that one of the two matters for heart disease. The other one is actually cardiovascularly neutral. Okay, so the million dollar question becomes, how do you know if your high LDL is the one that matters or if it's the other? That's what your doctor doesn't know. So simply said, if your LDL is high, the doctors say they need to put you on a statin. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But remember, they have a drug for high LDL. So how do you know which one is predominant and how to figure that out? This is where it gets complicated. Now let's take a look at another uh, piece of information in this lipid panel, and that's triglycerides, right? Which also has a checkered history. Now, if you truly fast prior to taking a lipid test, you'll get your true results. Listen to this. 
our triglyceride has a risk ratio of 1.8. What that means is there's an 80% chance that you're more likely to develop risk of a heart attack in your lifetime. 80% from your triglycerides. So which do you think is actually more important? High triglycerides at 80% or high DL at 30%? Now remember, 30% LDLs, they have a, they have a, a, a statin for it. Now, for the triglycerides, recently, over the recent years, they developed a drug for it, but, you know, it had a lot of side effects, and, and a lot of the doctors didn't want to use it. So, you know, they really don't push it. Now, let's take a look at the HDL cholesterol, the good cholesterol. And then we'll tie all this together and help you determine where you are metabolically. HDL is mostly protein rather than lipid. And what that means is fat. Lipid is fat. Um, it has been shown in many studies, the higher your HDL, the better your recycling capability is and the lower your risk for heart disease. So you want a high HDL. What is that? High density fat. Dr. Lustig referenced a uh, Jerry Reverend and he said back in the 1980s, when it offloaded its lipids into different tissues, those triglycerides actually became the bad kind of LDL, the small LDL. What he realized was that the HDL was actually protective against that offloading of small LDL and that the triglyceride to HDL ratio was perhaps the most important risk factor for determining heart disease. Dr. Lustig, concurred with that discovery. Now, simply put, you're looking at the bad guy and the good guy in comparison to each other. So basically what you want to do, if you, if, if you recall, I said that the five optimal markers for um, good metabolic health includes two cholesterol, and that would be your triglycerides and your HDL. So if you take the ratio of your triglyceride to your HDL, it should be less than 1.5, less than or equal to 1.5. Now, here's a disclaimer. That 1.5 ratio is actually for African-Americans. It turns out that, that this is, is really um, ethnic based, racially based. And um, African-Americans numbers should be 1.5. Now, the cutoff is 2.5. And now if you got a ratio of 2.5, you got a problem. So there's a, there's a median, I guess, range between the two where if you're other than African-American, um, 2.0 or less, you could be okay. But if optimally, if everybody could be at 1.5, Dr. Lustig said, you know, jokingly he said, of course, they'll probably live forever. So the goal is to increase your HDL, and that's how you, that's how you overcome heart disease um, as far as cholesterol is concerned. Now, what I want to do is let's unpack the ratios. Now, so I, I want you to be able to calculate your own. Now, I know most of you watching may know how to do this, uh, but trust me, some people don't, and they won't say anything. So I'm going to use money as a cross-reference for you to understand how ratios work. I know everyone can count money, even if they can't do anything else, they can count money. So I said the higher your uh, HDL, the lower the ratio, right? So simply take a calculator and use, you can use the one on your phone. I know everybody got a cell phone now as well. And, and just input your triglyceride number from your lipid panel, input that number, then divide that number by your HDL and you'll get a, um, a rational number. That means a, a fractional number or a number with a decimal is what you'll get. And you want that number to be 1.5 or less. And, and you can go back over your history if you have the history of your, your panel results and go back and put the numbers in and, and see how the markers are going up and down. But what I want you to realize and see the significance of your HDL, if you can increase your HDL, um, that as your HDL increases, your ratio decreases. And that's a good thing, right? As your HDL, 
which is the bottom number, your triglycerides divided by your HDL. It's a, it's a fraction. Numerator and the top triglycerides, denominator is HDL. Now, let's relate this to money. What I want to do is, is I want to replace your triglyceride, the top number, with money. And we're going to say a dollar and put a one there, right? And the bottom number, we're going to replace that, your, your HDL, we're going to replace that with a number. We're going to call it, we, first number we're going to use is four. Now, why am I using one and four? Everybody knows that in a dollar, there are four quarters, right? So it's one divided by four. You put that in your calculator, you get 0.25, 25 cents. Every quarter is 25 cents. That's what I want you to keep in mind, okay? Every dollar is made up of four quarters, and one quarter is 25 cents. Now, what I said was if you increase your HDL, your ratio would go down. So watch this. So it, now we want to take that four and change it to a 10, right? And you do that ratio. Now think about this. In a dollar, how many dimes do you have, which is 10? How many dimes do you have? You got 10. Right? You got 10 dimes for every dollar. So if you take one of those dimes, one divided by 10, you're going to get a decimal 0.1. That's 10 cent, right? So now we went, as, we, as our HDL went from 4 to 10, it increased, right? What happened to our ratio, our value? It went from 25 cent to 10 cent. Didn't it decrease? Your ratio decreases. That's the point I wanted to make to you, okay? And let's do one more. And the other one would be, let's replace the... Uh, the four quarters with hmm, two fifty cent pieces. So we're gonna go from four to two. So now we're gonna we're gonna decrease the HDL instead of increasing. We're gonna decrease it from four to two. So then your one, your triglyceride, your one or your one dollar. You get how many fifty cent pieces do you have in a dollar? You got two. Two fifty cent pieces make a dollar. One divided by two is 0.5, It's fifty cent. Same thing. That ratio. So now when you went from when you were at four. In your denominator for your HDL and you went and you decreased it to two, you went from 25 cent to 50 cent. What happened? It increased, didn't it? So your ratio increased. Same thing with your triglyceride to HDL. And that's kind of how I wanted to kind of cross-reference the two with money so that you can understand how uh, that ratio comes into play and hopefully understand the significance of making sure your HDL increases and understanding that the most important cholesterol uh, markers you need to look at would be your triglycerides and your HDL, not your LDL, because your triglycerides has an 80% risk factor for heart disease, whereas your LDL has a 30% risk factor for heart disease. Let that sink in, okay? Let me finish with this. Dr. Lustig says that um, these different molecules are evolution of each other, right? How they are made, how they get processed by the liver, how they end up um, at the fat cells, what gets offloaded, what gets recirculated back. So a lipid profile is just a snapshot of what's happening at any given point. So in order to make heads or tails, you have to be able to fold Think about this. You got to be able to fold that into a narrative because everything is happening. It's a snapshot in time. And of course, that's not what the doctor is doing. Rather, they look at the lab slip and look at the high or low, red or green. If your LDL is high, they say you need a statin. If your HDL is high, they say don't worry about it. You have to look at the interrelationship. And that's never what was taught. In medical school and that's according to a doctor several doctors that i've looked at or looked into i hope i was able to break this down uh, to some point where you can look at your own results more closely question your doctor if he or she say you need a statin be vigilant with your health you are responsible for you